a company just crossed $5 trillion in market value, a milestone so unprecedented that only a handful of corporations in human history have ever approached it. But the valuation isn't the real story. The real story is what happened in Arizona over the past nine months that almost nobody outside specialized industry circles noticed. NVIDIA, the company powering virtually all artificial intelligence development globally, just accomplished something experts said was impossible, bringing cutting edge semiconductor manufacturing back to American soil in under a year not the simple chips that go into basic electronics. The most advanced AI processors on Earth, the chips that determine which nations lead in the technology that will define the 21st century. These aren't manufactured in established American facilities that have been operating for decades. These are brand new production lines built from scratch in nine months, staffed by American workers, producing chips so sophisticated that only three companies on the planet can manufacture them at all. And NVIDIA's CEO just announced this happened specifically because the president demanded it for national security reasons. This is where economic policy, geopolitical strategy, and technological revolution collide in ways that will reshape global power dynamics for generations. Here's what actually happened, why it matters far beyond one company's stock price, and what it reveals about the emerging competition between America and China that will define everything from military capability to economic dominance over the next several decades. NVIDIA's CEO Jensen Huang just gave an interview revealing details about an industrial transformation that happened largely in secret while everyone was distracted by other headlines. The context matters enormously. For decades, virtually all advanced semiconductor manufacturing happened in Taiwan and South Korea, with American companies designing chips but outsourcing actual production to Asia. This created massive national security vulnerabilities. If Taiwan faced military conflict with China, America's entire technology industry could collapse overnight since we literally couldn't produce the chips our economy runs on. Previous administrations acknowledged this problem, allocated billions for domestic semiconductor manufacturing through legislation like the CHIPS Act, but tangible results remained years away as companies navigated bureaucracy, permitting construction timelines, and the immense technical challenges of building advanced fabrication facilities. Then the current administration took a different approach, direct pressure on industry leaders to deliver results immediately, not in five years or 10 years, but within months. When asked how difficult it was to bring advanced chip production to Arizona, Huang's response reveals something genuinely extraordinary about how this happened. According to Huang, when the president took office, he demanded that critical AI chip manufacturing be brought onshore for national security, that America reindustrialize at unprecedented speed, and that the United States establish unchallengeable leadership in artificial intelligence. The administration didn't want studies, committees, or five-year plans. They wanted results at the speed of light. Huang committed to bringing manufacturing back within nine months through partnerships with TSMC the Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturer that produces most of the world's advanced chips, along with Foxconn and other partners. Nine months later, the most advanced AI chip in the world is now in volume production entirely in the United States, manufactured in Arizona by American workers. Think about what that timeline represents. Building advanced semiconductor fabrication facilities, called FABs, in industry terminology, traditionally takes three to five years minimum. These aren't simple factories. They're among the most complex manufacturing facilities humans have ever built, requiring extreme precision where contamination measured in nanometers can ruin entire production runs. They need specialized clean rooms, advanced robotics, cooling systems, power infrastructure capable of supplying small cities, and supply chains, coordinating thousands of specialized components. Accomplishing this in nine months required construction workers, electricians, plumbers, and mechanical engineers working around the clock in what Huang describes as an extraordinary industrial mobilization. When asked if manufacturing in the United States is more expensive than Taiwan, Huang acknowledged it absolutely is, at least initially. Reshoring manufacturing for the first plant of its kind costs considerably more money, but he frames it as worth the investment for multiple reasons, national security benefits of not depending on geographically vulnerable foreign production, 
supply chain resilience protecting against disruptions, and job creation benefits domestically. Huang predicts this will create millions of high-quality jobs over time, not just in chip manufacturing, but in building AI supercomputers and what he calls AI factories that will be used across every industry. He argues that while the initial investment costs more, over time it will pay for itself many times over through economic growth, job creation, and maintaining American technological leadership. This represents a fundamental shift in how American industrial policy is operating, explicitly accepting higher costs in exchange for strategic advantage and long-term security, rather than optimizing purely for short-term cost efficiency. The national security dimension is what makes this genuinely historic, rather than just an interesting business story. For decades, American technology leadership rested on designing advanced products while outsourcing manufacturing to locations with cheaper labor and established infrastructure. This worked economically, but created strategic vulnerabilities where adversaries could potentially cut off access to critical technologies during conflicts. Advanced AI chips are particularly sensitive because they're dual-use technology, equally applicable to civilian artificial intelligence applications and military systems. Whoever controls advanced chip production controls which nations can develop cutting-edge AI for everything from autonomous weapon systems to intelligence analysis to cybersecurity. The president's argument, according to Huang, was simple. America cannot afford to have critical manufacturing of technologies essential to national security, dependent on facilities that could be destroyed, blockaded, or captured during conflict. That argument is strategically sound, and NVIDIA decided to go all in on bringing manufacturing onshore despite the costs and complexity. Huang frames this as beneficial for jobs, national security, supply chain resilience, business growth, and America's competitive position globally, describing it as a vision where everybody wins. But there's another dimension to this story that's equally important and gets into genuinely complex geopolitical territory, China. During the previous administration, Export restrictions were implemented, preventing NVIDIA from selling its most advanced chips to Chinese customers, ostensibly to prevent China from using American technology for military applications or human rights abuses. These restrictions had dramatic effects. NVIDIA went from 95% market share in China's AI chip market to essentially 0% market share over four years. That's not just a business loss. That's complete exclusion from one of the world's largest technology markets. The current administration just negotiated a deal with China that Huang describes as potentially creating conditions for American technology companies to compete in the Chinese market again, reverting to policies from the first Trump administration, where American companies had the best and first access to advanced technology, but were then allowed to compete globally and set international standards. Huang argues the previous restrictions backfired by conceding the second largest technology market in the world, while doing nothing to actually slow China's technological development. Here's where this gets genuinely complicated and where reasonable people can disagree about optimal policy. Huang argues that China has already developed indigenous capability to manufacture millions of AI chips domestically, that their military clearly doesn't rely on American technology since they've been banned from accessing it, and that export restrictions accomplish nothing except handing market share to Chinese competitors while American companies lost revenue that funds research and development. From this perspective, restrictions harmed American companies without providing any actual security benefit since China just developed domestic alternatives. But there's a counter-argument. Maybe those restrictions did slow China's development, buying time for America to establish manufacturing independence and maintain technological leadership. Maybe allowing NVIDIA to sell cutting-edge chips to Chinese customers would accelerate their AI development in ways that create long-term strategic disadvantages. This is genuinely difficult territory where short-term business interests, long-term strategic competition, and practical effectiveness of export controls all intersect in ways that don't have obvious right answers. What's undeniable is that hundreds of billions of dollars are flowing into AI infrastructure build-out globally, and NVIDIA is positioned at the absolute center of that transformation. Huang describes their business as really strong and accelerating because AI made humongous breakthroughs in the past year. It's now effective, useful, generating real results across every industry from manufacturing to robotics to healthcare. 
The platform shift from traditional computing on CPUs to AI-powered computing on GPUs is just beginning, and it's accelerating because AI is finally delivering results that justify massive investment. The fastest growing companies in the world are AI and software companies generating enormous revenue and becoming profitable using NVIDIA's technology. This build-out will continue for years, potentially decades, as every industry transforms how it operates using artificial intelligence. NVIDIA's $5 trillion valuation reflects markets betting that this transformation is real, permanent, and that NVIDIA will remain the dominant infrastructure provider throughout the transition. But let's zoom out to the bigger picture of what this all means. What's happening right now is a fundamental restructuring of global technological and economic power. For 30 years, globalization meant designing products in developed nations and manufacturing them wherever labor was cheapest and infrastructure was most established. That created economic efficiency, but also strategic vulnerabilities and job losses in manufacturing economies. The pendulum is now swinging back toward reshoring critical manufacturing for strategic industries, even when it costs more, because nations are prioritizing security and resilience over pure cost optimization. This shift is happening across Western democracies. Not just America, but Europe and allied Asian nations are all investing heavily in domestic semiconductor production, battery manufacturing, and other strategic industries. The geopolitical competition with China is driving this more than any other factor. China has spent decades building manufacturing capability, often through technology transfer requirements and intellectual property acquisition that Western nations now view as strategic threats. The response is economic decoupling in strategic sectors, not complete separation, but deliberate construction of parallel supply chains for technologies deemed critical to national security or economic competitiveness. What NVIDIA accomplished in nine months is a proof of concept that reshoring can happen much faster than traditional timelines suggest when there's sufficient political will, industry cooperation, and acceptance of higher costs for strategic benefit. But it's also important to understand limitations. NVIDIA is manufacturing chips in Arizona, but they're doing it through partnership with TSMC, the Taiwanese company that possesses the specialized knowledge and expertise for advanced semiconductor fabrication. America is building domestic production capability, but we're still dependent on foreign expertise and supply chains for critical components, materials, and manufacturing know-how that takes decades to develop. True manufacturing independence would require not just final assembly facilities, but entire vertical supply chains, from raw materials, through specialized equipment, through expertise and institutional knowledge. That's a multi-decade project requiring sustained investment and industrial policy that maintains focus across multiple administrations. Whether America has the political capacity to sustain that kind of long-term industrial strategy remains an open question. Corporate incentives still favor short-term cost optimization. Political incentives change with every election. And global supply chains are so interconnected that complete independence is probably impossible. The question is whether we can achieve sufficient redundancy and resilience to withstand disruptions without complete economic collapse. The NVIDIA story is inspiring in demonstrating what's possible with focused effort and political will. Nine months from commitment to volume production of the world's most advanced AI chips on American soil is genuinely remarkable and shows that American industrial capacity hasn't been permanently lost. It can be rebuilt when there's sufficient motivation. But it's also a cautionary tale about vulnerabilities created by decades of outsourcing and the enormous costs of rebuilding strategic capacity. The hundreds of billions flowing into AI infrastructure represent both opportunity and risk. Opportunity for nations and companies positioned to lead the transformation. Risk for those who fall behind in what may be the most important technological transition since industrialization. Where NVIDIA goes from here, whether they can successfully compete in China while maintaining American technological leadership, whether domestic manufacturing proves sustainable and expandable, whether the AI revolution delivers on its promise of transforming every industry will help determine not just one company's future, but the entire balance of global economic and strategic power for the next several decades. That's why a $5 trillion valuation, as staggering as it is, might actually understate the significance of what's happening.